Chair right, recognizes the gentlelady from uh, North Carolina, Ms. Ross, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Chairman Lucas and Ranking Member Lofgren, for holding this hearing. And to Administrator Nelson, thank you for the fabulous job you are doing at NASA. Um, my state of North Carolina has contributed to NASA for decades. It's the home state of James Webb. Um, and then, of course, Christine Darden, one of NASA's hidden figures who broke barriers in the STEM industry and in gender and racial equality, is from North Carolina. We have three members of the Science Committee from North Carolina, including um, my colleague, uh, Congresswoman Fushi. But Christine was uh, the first African-American woman to be promoted into senior executive service at NASA's Langley Research Center. And just last week, I got to join Governor Cooper, uh, a local educator, and a third grade class from the Explorers School in my district to honor astronaut Christina Cook. Um, and she's a three-time grad of NC State University and, as you know, the only woman selected to join the Artemis II mission. Um, she was also a participant in an all-women spacewalk, which we're still celebrating. Um, I want you to know that I will continue to fight for robust funding for NASA so that we can keep doing the incredible things that you have been leading and um, everything that makes groundbreaking research possible. So to that end, I want to follow up on some of the workforce issues that we've heard about today. Um, so we hear a lot from the burgeoning commercial space sector and we know that that benefits the nation, exploration, our economy, and that's good. But it also means that there's increased competition for trained aerospace professionals. And I wanted to know from you, to what extent does that increased competition for science and technical professionals affect NASA and your ability to fill and retain experienced top-notch people? Congresswoman, you have put your foot, your finger, on the allure of private industry to bring NASA folks into private industry because they can pay them so much more uh, is a real concern. However, there seems to be a mysterious pixie dust at NASA that people enjoy working there. And that's the proofs in the pudding about what some of these wizards do. Now, certainly, our any success that we might have is due to the commercial sector as well because the body that you think of as NASA, which is about 60,000 employees, is basically about 17,000 uh, civil servants and 45,000 contractors. They all wear the NASA badge, but they're all part of the NASA family. Uh, and it's that combination that we've been able to be successful and again, I tell you, everything we do is right on the edge. And when we launch next Monday night, it's white knuckle time. Uh, but that's the business we're in. And these folks really are rather incredible. Um, we, I absolutely agree with you. Um, NASA's STEM engagement programs are also important to building that pipeline and to STEM students and learners of all ages. And it's important to track the impact and efficiency of our STEM investments, and I'm glad to see your progress in developing and maximizing the use of STEM Gateway. Um, that's the database that does lets us know what's going on. Could you speak more about the STEM Gateway and NASA's evaluation work in the Office of STEM Engagement? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you've been generous with us in the appropriations to keep this uh, STEM effort going. Uh, reaching out with grants uh, to universities, colleges, uh, community colleges all over America. Uh, we particularly, for example, uh, make an effort to get into rural 
colleges and universities so that we're not missing the talent that might be hidden out there like Christina Cook. Exactly. Uh, and, and so there is a very serious effort there. We have a, a huge intern program at NASA that we pay them. Uh, we end up hiring 30% of our interns. Uh, I wish you could see some of these interns and talk to them. Their, their eyes are as big as this with excitement telling what they're working on. Uh, STEM is very much a part. And Mr. Chairman, let me just say, as a part of STEM, what we learned from Apollo when we went to the moon and did all of that, it so excited two generations of students that they became engineers and scientists and technicians. Uh, and we're going to see the same thing come out of the Artemis program as we go back to the moon and then to Mars. Thank you, and I yield back. Sure.